So this is the Aries Flex twin lens reflex camera from the 1950s. There was various models of the Aries Flex and I believe this is the Model U. I'll give you a little tour around the camera and then later on we're going to give it a clean up, put some neat foot oil on the leather and I'll just see how that freshens up this beautiful camera. So first and foremost it's a twin lens reflex camera. So obviously you've got two lenses, uh, hence the name twin lens reflex. Top lens is your viewing or composing lens. Once you lift up your waist level finder, you look into there and you'll get your focus and effectively you're looking through that lens there. So that's the one that you compose with. Now the bottom lens, this is your taking lens. On this particular camera, it is an Olympus Zuiko 7.5 centimeter, which is 75 millimeters, and it is an F 3.5 lens. Now, the reason I believe this is a Model U is because this particular camera comes with a, and I'm gonna get this wrong, it comes with a Seikosia Rapid Shutter. And other variations of this camera come with a copal shutter. A maximum shutter speed of 1 500th of a second and we get a bulb setting as well for long exposures. And these, these all work a treat. You charge the shutter by raising this lever here. When you want to release the shutter, you press that lever in the opposite direction. Now some twin lens reflex cameras, they've got the shutter release button there. This one hasn't. It's got a threaded socket for a cable release but obviously I've not got a cable release. You've got two little pins, top and bottom, and you can use those to rotate through your shutter speeds. There, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little arrow mark, and that's where you align your chosen shutter speed. Uh, so charge the camera, release. To set your aperture, you go to this side of the lens, and you just rotate this lever to set your desired aperture. And the apertures on this particular camera go from f3.5 to f22. That is your socket for a flash unit. We've not got one, so we're not gonna use one. That is your focus adjusting knob. You've got the settings in meters. This top knob here is your film advance lever, film counter window there. And when you put a new film in, the camera shuts off without me knowing, sorry about that. So as I was trying to say, once you've got the film in there and you're winding on, on the film advance knob, you're pushing on that central button that will allow you to adjust this little button, which then will set your film counter window there to S for start, and then you're good to go. On this side of the camera, you've got some locking pins, loading a film, you pull this out, turn it round and it locks it in place, so you can easily load your film. And then once the film is in there, you can just turn it and the locking pins lock the, lock the film back in place. On the back of the camera, we've got quite a simple exposure chart. Now I've not got my glasses on, so I can't actually see what it says, but if you look down there, you've got some certain lighting situations and it tells you what aperture and what the recommended shutter speed is. So that's quite simple because this camera obviously doesn't have a built-in light meter. You can use a handheld light meter, which I will probably do, or I might, I might try a couple of frames by using this chart, why not? Right, let's just have a look at the base of the camera. You've got four feet, so it will stand up quite nicely for display or storage. You've got a standard threaded tripod mount there, and then you've got your back door release lock. So you push it that way, click that down, and then the, the whole back of the camera opens up. I will show you all that later when we come to loading a film. So for now, we'll just close that back up. That's locked in place. Let's just show you around the waist level finder, the top of the camera. So you pop that up and that basically opens up your viewfinder. So you look through there, your image will be displayed on the ground glass. You've got a magnifying loop there. That just gives you a nice focusing aid. On this camera as well, there is a sports finder, believe it or not. You look through that little cutout there and then you pop the front of the waist level finder down you can see right through this. So basically you're looking straight through like that. Um, it's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it gives you an idea of what's going on as opposed to using the camera like that, which is uh, basically the best way to use them in my humble opinion. So what I'm gonna do is add some neats for oil to a little kitchen towel and I'll give it a shake. I got this from a uh, from a saddler's. We've just put a little bit on there, and we'll start on the back actually. And we're just going to rub it on nice and liberally, and that just gives it a little bit of shine. brings the brings the leather back to life actually. 
Look at that, we're getting a nice little bit of shine on there. I'm just going to go around the bottom as well. I'll just pop that down there. On the top of the finder, we've got a nicely refurbished Eris Flex twin lens reflex camera. Now one slight issue I've got with this camera, when I'm looking through the waist level finder, it is quite dim in there. Not so bad in good light, and that's where we'll be shooting this camera, but when you're indoors or something like that, trying to, trying to compose an image, it is quite dull, quite hazy. So uh, I've tried to clean the ground glass a little bit, just, just trying to dust it off, there wasn't much coming off there at all. Then I decided to take out the viewing lens, like so. And just unscrew that. Had a look at the lens, and it's that is crystal clear. There's no haze, no fungus, no problem whatsoever in there. But in the inner lens, it is quite hazy. So uh, I just gave it a little bit of a tickle with the old kitchen towel, and it was still quite hazy in there. I could strip the camera down and try and clean it up. I'm not a, uh, a camera mechanic. Uh, I'm very clumsy, I'm very forgetful, I'm very prone to losing parts, so we're just going to stick the old, clearly, so I'm going to stick the old viewing lens back on, like so, and we're just going to deal with the fact that it's a little bit hazy when I'm composing an image, and we'll try and compensate for that accordingly. Alright, she's looking good. Okay, time to load this beautiful camera. First thing we need to do is spin the camera over, slide open the locking pin pop that down there and open up the back like so just going to stand it on its head the roll of film that i've chosen is a roll of former pan iso 100 let's just make sure that the iso is set to iso 100 on the Sekonic light meter and there it is this is the first time i've loaded this camera so uh, let's hope there's no errors on my part so what we're going to do is pop open this little side pin here turn it to the open position slot that in there close the locking pin and that has got the film nicely in place. And when you're loading these cameras, make sure when you load it onto the take-up spool, it is facing in the right direction with the paper. Bloody camera shut off on me again without me knowing. Sorry about that. So head am again with an afterthought. So as I was saying, if you see the numbers on the backing paper facing you, that's the right way, you're in the correct position. If it's like that, black, featureless, that is the wrong way. So uh, take it back off, re-spool it, and uh, start again. The winding, there we go. Hopefully that stops. It does, it clicked, it stopped. That now is loaded, ready to shoot. Uh, I'm not gonna charge the shutter just yet because I don't wanna accidentally trip it off, but that is ready to go. Okay, so that's 12 frames shot with this camera. Difficulties I had was getting a focus. I'm not sure that I nailed focus every time. It's quite hazy in there, it's quite dark. I think it was okay. See how things look when the film's developed. Now, what I did notice, after every exposure, you've got to press in that center button. There's a center button there in the winding knob. You press that in and then it'll allow you to wind on until you can see your next frame in that window there and then the the wind on mechanism will stop so you can't overwind which is great for me now i do think that i possibly double exposed one image i don't know we'll have to wait and find out i bumped into a mate of mine in town so i, I convinced her to uh, to pose for a photograph for me once i took the shot of her i'm trying to wind onto the next frame and it was locked it just wouldn't let me wind on at all it kind of threw me a little bit so what i did i pressed in the button and held the button in this time and wound on and it, and it wound on okay subsequently the next frames they were okay just press the button in and then wind and everything was okay so what i've done i wound on to the end of the film we're just going to take the film out of the camera so we're just going to unlock the bottom of the case open the clasp and then it should open up and hopefully 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 yes there we have it a fully wound on roll of film so to take it out of the canister just pull that pin out again pull off the backing paper wind that round and that now is done exposed ready to develop oh <laughs> cannot wait i watched a video on youtube of some guy from japan so he was doing a little bit of a cleanup on one of these old tlrs and he said they, they're quite easy and so what i'm going to do before i put another roll of film into this camera i'm going to take off this waist level finder take out the ground glass give the ground glass and the fresnel screen possibly if it's got a fresnel screen underneath i'll give them a gentle clean i think it's just a viewing screen that needs a little bit of a tickle maybe even the magnifier needs a tickle as well just a bit of a bit of an old clean up and then i think we should be okay all right that's it for now let's go get this film developed okay wash complete now the scary bit is there anything on 
this roll of film. Oh, there is, there is, there is, there is. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Who? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've got twelve images. No double exposures. How cool is that? I can't tell from here how sharp they are, but they look okay. Look at my little granddaughter's hair. They're flying all over the place. Okie dokie. Let's, uh, let's go get these dry and get them scanned. So this was my first ever shot with this 1950s twin lens reflex camera. My little grandson there sat in the sunshine. We've got some lovely light on his face. Unfortunately, as I tripped the shutter, I saw him blink. So I thought, bugger, let's take another one just to make sure, try and get his eyes open. So I took a second shot, just moved him round a little bit and it's, it's better. His eyes are still a bit squinty. It was a really bright day, but the contrast and the light in that image and the previous image, they look pretty good. I'm happy with the contrast. I'm happy with the clarity. It's fairly sharp. That's zoomed into 300% and it <laughs> doesn't look too bad. We've got some nice detail in there and I'm quite pleased with those two shots. Shot number three was of my granddaughter. And again, she sat in some good light. We've got some good contrast there. Some good detail in her hair, pretty sharp, that's zoomed into 300%. And I've got a few little dust marks that I need to get rid of. But other than that, three shots, happy days. And then later that evening, these two young tourists from Hong Kong, looking around the city, said, guys, can I get a shot? They were more than happy to pose for a shot. And this was the last good shot that I took. Some good light in there, and it's sharp. Again, I'm quite pleased with that. A couple of minutes later, I took a second shot and the light had gone. All the rest of the evening and into the next day, we never got any more light. And as you can see, for whatever reason, the photographs are so muddy, just not good at all. Young fellas opening a new coffee shop. Unfortunately, that, one, that one's not bad. It's got a little bit of contrast in it, but it's not. I think I missed, well, I've definitely missed focus on it. Not a bad result, not the greatest. And again, a little bit of contrast in there, but there's no light, no definition and yeah it's not too happy with that one and then decided to take a a bit of a landscape shot and unfortunately not a winner these guys that's not come out too badly but again because there's no light on the scene oh, it just it just hasn't worked so uh, yeah pretty disappointed with that one unfortunately and same with my mate there that's that's the a shot that uh, that i had some some hope for but unfortunately because there's no light there, again, I'm, I'm blaming the light, it could be me, but I'm blaming the light, it's just, there's no contrast there, there's no definition, and it's, unfortunately, it's just not a winner. Sorry, Tans, I'll send you the picture anyway, but uh, not the best shot I've ever taken. And then the last shot, another couple of tourists down on the waterfront, it had turned cold, it had turned uh, pretty, pretty gloomy, actually, and thankfully that was the last frame, and, oh, yeah, that, that was it. It's definitely a camera that's capable. Uh, if you get the right lighting conditions, you know, you can make some decent shots out of it. So in, in that regard, out of a roll of 12, I've come out with four photographs that I'm pretty pleased with. The experience, not too bad, not too bad. I'm glad I've done it. I'm glad I've got it out of the way. It's a monkey off my back, something I should have been shooting a long time ago, and it's been playing on my mind. Finally done it, don't have to do it again. I can get better results, and I'm getting far better results from other cameras of that vintage. Uh, namely my Zeiss Iconta M 6x6 folder, getting some lovely shots out of that one, and the Voigtlander Besser 2 6x9 folder, again, fantastic results out of that. This one got potential, but I won't be rushing back to it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, catch you later.